in my assumption. And I'll turn that thing off. And um, it's about a journey. And Reverend Sylvia's had a wonderful journey, and she's the right person to speak on this topic today. Would you welcome Reverend Sylvia to the platform? <laughs> Long time since I've had a man on my arm. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. And hello, everyone here. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you. Well, you know, sometimes when people learn that I'm a metaphysical minister, they look at me knowingly and they say, oh, your new age. And I say, oh no, I'm new thought. Then completely baffled, they say, well, what's new thought? And I thought it, it always amazes me that nobody knows what new thought is because it's been with us for the past hundred years in the modern world and well over thousands of years in the ancient world. So what is the difference between new age and new thought? New age turns outward, new thought turns inward. With new age, we depend on many different disciplines. We may follow a guru, or perhaps we absorb the energy of crystals. We may follow astrology and read our stars. Numerology tells us a lot about ourselves. And so it goes on and on. It may be aromatherapy, maybe cosmology, iridology. The list is endless and they're all on the outer. And all these things are helpful because they give us hope in the dark times and because all things in the universe are interconnected and interdependent, then they must have some bearing on our lives. However, there comes a time in our spiritual growth when we must turn from the outer helps and rely on our own internal guidance the still small voice within. It is the urge of the soul to get back to its source. And we find that we have an inner strength that will never fail us. It is the God presence within, sometimes called the indwelling Christ. It is infallible and it speaks only the truth to us and tells us of our own inner divinity. As our spiritual awareness grows, we turn inward every day for guidance and in perfect faith and trust, then we find our life unfolding before us in seemingly magical ways. If we need any out to help, then we'll be led to the right avenue. We find that as we lie more and more on our inner life, our interest in the outer help just drops away. We find our strength by being firmly enfolded in spirit and by living firstly from the truth within. We find our strength by being firmly enfolded in spirit at all times. And this is what we call what new thought is all about. And it means dropping all the traditional dogma that we've always believed in and believing only in our own inner truth that is always there, patiently waiting to be realised and expressed. So give thanks for it, recognise it, and for it is our destiny to be the fullest expression of God that we can envision. It is up to us. So make sure your motto is to always turn inward.
And then you'll find the silence of the truth within. You know, Charles Spillmore told us all about the silence. He was an amazing man. I'll quote him here. He says, all power has its birth in the silence. There's no exception to this rule in all the evidence of life. Noise is the dying vibration of a spent force. All the clatter of visibility from the harangue of the ward politician to the thunder's roar is but the evidence of exhausted power. All who have moved in the world to better things have received their inspiration from the spirit within and have always looked to it for instruction. God is the silent voice that speaks into visibility all the life there is. Isn't that a wonderful saying? God is the silent voice that speaks into visibility all the visibility of life that there is. And he says that in Talks on Truth. So silence, and in the stillness of the silence, we bring into contact with the awesome power that sustains the universe. Charles Fillmore also tells us that all power has its birth in the signs. And in his book, Teach Us to Pray, he writes, the purpose of the silence is to still the activity of the individual mind and to see the thoughts so that still small voice of God will be heard or still the thought rather. So that we've got to still all our own thought and listen to the still silent voice. For in silence, spirit speaks truth to us and just that truth which we stand in need. He goes on to say, to realise an idea in the silence is to clothe it with life, substance and intelligence and to actualise it and to know there is fulfilment. It always works. So out of the silence comes spiritual inspiration, practical ideas and divine guidance in all things. For out of the silence comes Creation comes all life. But how often in our busy lives do we stop and really give ourselves over to the silence? The silence is just waiting to inform us and instruct us in the ways we are meant to live. How often do we consciously open up heart and mind to the still small voice, which is trying to be heard above the clatter of our daily living. I think now I will have to sit down. The legs are giving out. Thank you, thank you. Okay. okay. How's that? Everyone's still there? Somebody hold back the crowds. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fillmore had a wonderful way of his words. What a wonderful man he must have been. He tells us that noise is the dying vibration of a spent force. And of course it is. But I'd never thought of it in that way until I read that wonderful phrase. Yet we live in noise most of the time day. The shops blare out ear-splitting music. The supermarket assails us with announcements of the latest specials. The trams grind by. Car radios pump out rock music and it's a relief to escape into our own front door and sink into the nearest chair and to really enjoy the peace and quiet. And here we know that God is the silent voice who speaks into visibility all the life there is. And when we take the time to seek the silence, we will find that it's the seat of all creative power. Just as God spoke the word to bring this world into being, 
so we can speak our word and bring our own personal will into being. So we must pray, meditate, and listen, listen, keep listening. Sometimes we're so busy praying and talking to God that we forget to listen. We forget to leave a space in our prayers to just be. And this is what meditation is all about. Just sitting in a state of beingness and leaving the space for God to tell us what we need to know. And it is when we can just be a state of inner stillness where the mind chatter has faded away, there are no thoughts of past or future, then we are firmly centered in the eternal now. Yet we are acutely aware of just being. And this sense of beingness is the most wonderful feeling there can be. And then it is the truth of God and the truth of our oneness with God that seeps into our awareness. The creative power of God's Holy Spirit is always patiently waiting for the gaps in our thinking to appear so that we can it can fill the gaps with creative insights that will help us to build a better world and give us the promptings of spirit. You know, some people give up on meditation in the early days because they say, and I've had this said to me so many times, oh, it's a waste of my time. Nothing ever happens. Know that it is never a waste of time to spend time in meditation because God's creative power is ceaselessly working. It never stops. So we may not have heard or felt anything in our meditation, but we will find that our days energize and all goes well. There are no upsets. Everything flows with a sense of, uh, of being right, uh, rightness and goodness. There are no upsets. We meet the very person who can help us with our projects. We find our questions being answered by a chance remark on the radio or in a book just picked up. And we have days where everything works together for our own good in a seemingly magical way. Our meditation has activated the creative power of the silence and we reap the benefits, whether we recognize it or not. You know, there was a time many years ago when I was in dire distress. My 22 year marriage had failed. The welfare mission I worked for had closed in due, due to the lack of funding. I walked away from my beloved church because it was not being administered according to the truth principles that we were teaching and many of my friends moved into state. I suddenly found myself alone and in deep misery. And that misery stayed for a couple of years. And I was having some very bitter talks with God saying, why did this happen to me? God, I was doing all my work for you. How could you allow this to happen? And so on and so on. I went into a long meditative state. Nothing happened. I received no answer. I picked up, I got up from my chair and I thought, well, that was a non-event. And I picked up a magazine from the floor and it opened at a page where I saw the Brooks Divinity School in Denver, USA. Here I could learn about new thought and study to become a minister. And I knew with a deep inner knowing that this was God's guidance. This was the answer. So my ministerial studies began and had I not meditated on that day, I would not be sitting here talking to you now. You know, sometimes our blackest times herald a whole new wonderful life. Or it is the dark times that give us new strength. What appears to be going right, wrong is really going right. Our consciousness cannot sustain our old ways of life. We are ready to develop the strength to move up into a whole new way of life. It certainly worked that way for me. 
And now I thank God for those dark times and the greater good they brought me. Know that a non-event meditation always yields results. We just have to learn how to recognize them. Well, how do we meditate? There are many techniques given for starting our meditation. I won't go into them all because we can be, can be influenced by techniques and we mustn't get too much invested into techniques. We must go with our feelings. And when we feel that feeling, just sink into the nearest chair and meditate, maybe for five minutes, it might be an hour, but do it. And it's amazing because once you go into that silence, you will get the truth emerging in your mind. And also, the more we meditate, the more we develop our self-awareness. Know yourself. You may be surprised at just what is driving your actions and hopefully you'll be able to laugh at yourself. We are made in the image and likeness of God. So God must have a great sense of humour because we can find out so much about ourselves that makes our, ourselves laugh and lifts our spirits. And if we do this, we will find our prayers lead us into meditation. And so Paul told the Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. So keep going and you will find yourself in the silence and learning a lot of self-awareness. I know I had a good laugh about myself when I heard myself making all this self-justification for what I'd been doing. And uh, I laughed at myself as I saw myself doing all sorts of things to make myself look good or whatever. <laughs> and it, it's, it's wonderful. Self-awareness is a marvellous thing. And we will find ourselves reacting to life's problems. Or, or rather, we will cease reacting to life's problems. Instead, we'll just let go and let go. And then the still small voice will guide us into acting for our own indwelling truth. So stop trying to cope with life on your own. Take hold of the power of the silence and listen, listen, listen to what God is telling you. Step into your divine authority right now, this very minute, and live with all the joy and enthusiasm and love that God is. Thank you. Just, just around this way. Oh. Okay. Here we go.